we're here in Hamilton, Bermuda. We're tied up right now at the Royal Bermuda Yacht Club and we are working on provisioning the ship and readying her for the next trip. Uh, this is a standard procedure that happens for us. We need to purchase fresh food and reprovision uh, used stores and load on whatever we need for the next program. Uh, do a little bit of maintenance at the same time. So it's a busy time for the crew uh, and they are getting the program and the ship ready to go. The ship uh, is the second vessel uh, that SEA has owned. It's the first one that we built ourselves. It was built in 1987. The ship is about 135 feet long. Uh, she carries a total crew of 38, or the most number of bunks. I think we'll have 35 on this voyage. We are getting prepared to set sail tomorrow afternoon to visit the North Atlantic Subtropical Gyro, also known as, as the Sargasso Sea, to uh, do some research on studying plastics in the North Atlantic Ocean. SEA has been sampling for plastics in the North Atlantic since the mid-70s, and we've had a very good data set put together since about the mid-80s. And we've sampled over 6,400 net toes. 6,400 times we put that net in the water and captured plastic. I think that's sort of an amazing stat. And we've done this all over the region in the, between the East Coast and Bermuda, slightly east of Bermuda and south to the Caribbean. What we're trying to do is get to about 40 degrees west longitude and see if the plastic starts to end. Some of the models indicate that we might see decreasing concentrations as we go east of 40 degrees west, but our goal is to try to get to about 40 degrees west and then map our way back to Bermuda. What we call a gyre is a region of the planet occurring at 30 degrees latitude. It's a, a consequence of an atmospheric high, so a beautiful, sunny location with low winds and low currents, but it is also a place where any floating debris will tend to accumulate. Where the plastic comes from is a very difficult question. Any trash that's on the side of the road, you can think of that a tiny piece of that is going to end up in the ocean one way or the other. Whether it's via river, by wind, dumping by boats, even though it's illegal since 1988 to dump plastic. I think there's been some misinformation out in the public about what the problem is with plastics in our ocean. I think what we're really trying to do is present the facts, present the data, and present the science behind it. And I think we do these, the science very strongly at SEA and we have a very strong history, 25 years of sampling in the North Atlantic, which we can really build upon. I think the most common misconception is this notion of a, a garbage patch that you probably heard about the Great Pacific Garbage Patch. People have dubbed this the Great Atlantic Garbage Patch. Garbage implies some sort of systematic, you know, disposal collection process. And I think a lot of it is, should be more generally termed as pollution. It is little fragments of plastic floating in the ocean. You can barely see it from the deck of a ship unless it's a very calm day and you're very specifically looking for it. Oceanography is a very subtle science where very small changes because they operate over such large regions can be very important to uh, ecosystems and the planet in general. And I think that's, that's the hardest thing to convey about oceanography is that it's a very subtle differences have big consequences.